Hey, what's up everybody? This is GN and on this video we have the incomparable Chris Costa sharing with us the thing that scares him the most. And on top of that, he's going to deliver 17 critical fighting lessons that we should all be adopting. And before I show you this really incredible interview, I just want to say to everybody who has stuck it out with Bunker Tactical over all of these years, I want to say thank you so much. I know we've gone through different changes and different instructors have popped in and out, but this is, I, I hope this really amounts to something because from the beginning, what I wanted to present was the totality of fighting and not specifically about any one thing. And that's precisely the path that we have taken over all these years. Now I understand that that may not be, what's the word I'm looking for? That may not be, well, let's put it this way. It's not conducive to growth because in this world, people like familiarity. They like what they like and they wanna see it over and over again. We here at Funker Tactical have resolved to show the totality of fighting from as many perspectives as possible. Now that means not every video is going to be sexy and explosions and speedboats and race cars and things like that. But I do hope, I sincerely hope that there is a sub segment of this crazy industry that really, really appreciate this kind of video. It's all substance. And like I said, while it may not be so sexy, I 100% feel like this kind of stuff is precisely what the industry needs. So thanks for sticking it out. I'm bringing sexy back real soon. We got a lot of great things in the pipeline in the works for you guys. So if you're a longtime subscriber, I just want to say thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please consider subscribing. Check out our older videos, check out our newer videos. And I really want to earn this subscription. So don't, don't just give it to me. If you feel like the totality of content here on Funker Tactical is worthy of your time, I'm gonna ask you to, to please subscribe or leave a comment and just engage with us. Uh, it's a crazy world here in social media land and it's not always the, the good content that rises to the top. It's more often the sexy viral type content. So thank you for the new subscribers. Big thank you for the old subscribers and for the new potential subscribers. Like I said, I want to earn it. I don't want you to just give it to me. So after this video, explore the totality of the content here on Funker Tactical over the years. And uh, if you feel like we've earned it, please hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, here's Chris Costa. What's up everybody? I'm here with Chris Costa. Chris Costa, I'd like to talk about fighting. I hear this a lot in commentary. I'll just shoot the guy. What are, what's your thought on that? My thought is if you're going to be well-rounded, then you need to be able to um, protect yourself in a hand-to-hand -hand environment because when you go hands-on or you start working into combatives, that doesn't mean you can shoot somebody. Um, I'm giving a mindset and use of force, deadly force lecture, and usually what you'll get is, well, what if you know the guy's a martial artist? Then, then you can do, well, you don't know that. And I don't know, I don't know anybody's capability, but what I do know is that there's gonna come a time where I'm not gonna be armed uh, or it, the situation is not gonna call for an armed response, which means, well, you got a couple options. Learn how to fight or you're gonna get punched in the face. Why is it right? that the firearms community seems to de-emphasize empty hand skills and you know focus on the feel good range, 70 yards, paper target? Because it's tiger. exactly that. It's sexy, it's glamorous, it's feel good. It's all the stuff that I get to wear. I'm a gunfighter and I don't need to be worried about anything else. And uh, that therein lies an issue. When you look at guys, to me, the guys that scare me, um, not only are guys that are really skilled combatively, right? But they're guys in edge weapon world. And when you start looking at what real trained professionals can do with an edge weapon, that ought to terrify you as a gun guy. And if you start looking at documented videos of guys with firearms going up against guys with edge weapons, that should then scare the crap out of you even more, which then should go, the gun is not gonna always solve the problem. So if you know the gun's not gonna solve all the problem, then you, and you still yet have a problem, you've gotta go, well then how does this knife altercation get handled, especially if I'm empty hand, right? So even if I'm just a combative guy, at some point I've got to confront a guy with a gun possibly and I've got to confront a guy with a blade or a baseball bat or whatever. So what we're trying to do is have an answer for that, that issue that's at hand. But you are right, it's not as glamorous. And here's the other thing, that means not only is it not glamorous, but I get to get on the mat with you mm -hmm. and I get to open myself up to a point of failure that's a little bit different than I missed that target. 
It's called, I just got freaking hammered. It's called my neck hurts now, or my leg hurts, or you just wrap me up and I kind of, I kind of feel a little demasculated, so to speak. And to eat that humble pie really sucks. The worst thing I'm gonna do on a gun range is miss a shot, bumble a reload, and then I get to pick my crap back up and I get to do it again, right? Maybe somebody saw, maybe somebody didn't. But the reality is the moment I go hands-on with you, you know everything about me right then. Right. And I know everything about you right then. Failure is a catalyst for progress. Why are so many people resistant to showing failure, particularly in social media, and in putting themselves in situations where they can fail and learn from um, I think it's a pride. I think if you go back to the Bible, was the one thing that like upsets God. It's like pride does, right? So for us, we have to swallow our pride. I have to, I have to sit there and understand. And what I teach in my classes is, is this. It's very simple. There is always another genetically more superior individual than you on the face of the planet. That means that there's a better gun guy than me, a better knife fighter than me, and that there's a uh, better combative guy than me, right? And if I know that that's a reality, what am I doing? to prepare or train for my most likely enemy and beat yesterday's me. Those are two categories that you're trying to do. How do I train to beat my most likely enemy, whoever that is for you and yep. for me, right? For a military guy, it might be different for a law enforcement, a mom or whatever. And how do I beat yesterday's me? And it doesn't need to be by but a small percentage. So if I'm always training and going, you know what, good isn't good enough, I'm gonna to continue to train. And where are my weaknesses? I can tell you right where all my weaknesses are right now. I know where they're at. Right, because those are the things that I'm working on. Do you have no problems expressing this to your fan base that, hey, I, no, I'm working on this, I'm, I'm, I could be better at this? Absolutely, and the reason why is because, here's the deal, it's not like we all came at it, whatever people see, let's just say for me right now, whatever you see me as, that's taken a long period of time. Like, so one of the things that I try to do most often is, um, when you start becoming a teacher, you find yourself always in teacher role and you start to forget what being a student is. So when some of my hobbies like skydiving come about, you start seeing what professionals look like and they make it look real easy and you become a student again. And you have many failures as a student, right? And then same thing for riding enduros or um, riding snowmobiles. It all looks easy. Well, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, let, me, let me transition and ask you, Chris Costa, as a student, who would you like to learn from? Who are you still learning from in the industry? Uh, everybody. It, 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 if I'm not learning technically, if I'm not learning a technical skill, I'm probably learning uh, a better way to teach or interact with somebody. So as an example, let's just say you and I both knew the same gun shit, right? right. Like speed reload, tack reload, there's only so many ways to slice it and dice it, right? I have my mojo, you have your mojo. But what I watch is the way you interact with the student and the way their light bulb went on. And you know what? That right there, one, I got to be a student in class and I got to have somebody else run me. Two, I got to watch the way somebody else teaches. And that is priceless if you're in this arena. I think, I think teaching is a separate art in and of itself. No matter, like you said, it's how you communicate the knowledge that's been given to you that brings more value to who you are particularly as a public figure. How well can you teach these light bulb moments? Um, is what you do a martial art? I think... Is gunfighting a martial art? Is marksmanship a martial art? Is the totality of Chris Costa is or wants to be, are you a martial artist? I want to give myself that much credit. The um, I think what we do is a, um, a very... There are, in the gun community, I grew up on gross motor skill. If you're gonna be in a gunfight, everything's gonna be gross motor skill. If you're not teaching gross motor skill, then then you're wasting your time, right? Because you're not gonna do it. Except when you're gonna pull a trigger, when you go to take a 25 yard shot, um, when you go to take a 500 yard shot, if you're, if you're a, a sniper on a bolt gun, read and win, and now you're having to deal with a hold or moving targets, um, you, you can't tell me some of that is gross motor skill. And I always compare it to an air combat controlman. He is calling in airstrikes. He knows his general whereabouts, where he's at. He's running dual comms, one to the plane, one to his team. He has a primary, a secondary. He's running white light. 
for low visibility application stuff. He's running lasers, which means he's running nods. This guy's got buttons all over the laser. He's got buttons all over his head. He's literally running a grid map. He's calling in airstrikes. He's shooting. He's still going to be a performer. If that guy can do it, I can do it too. And there ain't nothing I mentioned that was a gross motor skill on any of the things that he's doing. So I think that um, everything in every genre has a certain amount of technique that's gonna be applied to it. But when we're talking about fighting um, and we're talking about combatives and knives and everything else, the one thing that I feel is lacking, give me an average shooter who knows how to use his brain, he'll probably come out better than, a, than no offense, a master class that doesn't know how to deal in conflict or problem solve. Well, right. Why is that even a, a, a thing? Well, you know, I, I feel like that's fairly obvious. Do you, are you not finding that to be the case? Within the, I don't. Know. I feel like um, you're in a genre of people which is awesome for the Second Amendment. We have grown the Second Amendment. Um, we have so many guns and gear and colors and shoes and backpacks and all this other stuff, which is awesome, right? But people are more worried about looking good than winning and what it takes to win. And they're not building the mental side of them, which is, are you prepared? Like, are you ready to get, have you even gotten punched in the face before, right? Like some of these people are gonna be writing code of the how to do it manual while they're doing it. And, I, and what I know is, that's 50-50 and I don't like those odds. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. So what you have is you have the, um, what I call the gunfighter is disappearing because the mental game is disappearing and all the good glamour stuff, which I love too. Don't get me wrong, man. You put an infinity in my hand, a Cabot gun, hey, wrong, sex sells, baby. Wrong with like, cool, man. Hey, right? I want to run that stuff too. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you have to have the mental side you have to know when to pull the trigger, uh, when that green light is, and not only that, but you need to be able to do it morally. Can you teach and this? Can you teach this? What's that? That's what I teach. That's what I'm teaching here in this lecture. Sound decision making under stress. Sure. Where do we learn to learn more about it? Generally, I teach, uh, not only do I do the firearms portion in class uh, at obviously Costa Ludis, you know, you can check out the website, but I always teach a use of force, deadly force, and then mindset. And the mindset usually impacts people the most. You know what I mean? Because shooting is shooting is shooting at the end of the day. There's only so many different ways we're going to put a twist on it. But um, sharpening the mind is very, very important. I'll so. leave you with a quote. Tell me what you think of this. Do not rely on the tactics that won you yesterday's battle today. What does that mean? Um, don't get stagnant. And I think that um, the, the biggest habit you ask, like, why do I still like to go train? It's because I'm not the burning bush of knowledge. And because there might be one thing that you say in literally a three day period of class, only one thing in three days. And I take it away and that one thing saves my life. And you know what? That one thing was priceless to both me and my family and everything else. So how do you put a price tag on that, right? So how do I walk in going, I already, I already know how to shoot a handgun. Why am I going to a basic handgun class? But I go to basic handgun classes that other people teach because you know why? The root of our foundation of our fundamentals are there in that class. And I'm interested in the way he teaches it. And not only that, but going back to the teacher side, if I can take a student and circumvent a certain amount of time that it would normally take me to teach a block of instruction, and I can do it and the light kicks on faster, then I'm doing that student a better service because I'm not wasting their time. And I'm able to get them in, get the information to them, correct information, and then move on to other materials. You kind of transcend instructor and you become coach, you become teacher, you become something much more. And that's, that's I feel, where the true value is. Guys, Chris Costa with some truth bombs, with some just, honesty so thank you very much for this conversation thank you. Uh, appreciate it.